so this is the video uh, from Jesse. It's about FF16 <laughs> and the fact that people are crying about it because it's a little bit different than Final Fantasy used to be before. And that is really tragic. In fact, it's so tragic, it's like Yoshi P stabbing the fan base in the back. In fact, I bet Yoshi P did it maliciously just to betray everyone and think, oh, oh, you trusted me with your franchise, Final Fantasy? Because Yoshi P is already notorious for just being a terrible game designer. <laughs> game director and everyone knows Yoshi P hates Final Fantasy and this was the plan all along was to destroy Final Fantasy how by making it more fun yeah uh, people have been review bombing Final Fantasy 16 on Metacritic uh, it is in a better place now but it did have 4.0 in the beginning it's doing better now that they I think they had to go through and get rid of the lots of negative not negative but like zeros that were clearly part of the review bomb so I personally think that they should obviously like try to keep as many of the genuine zero reviews as possible and it does seem like they did try to do that but they had have had to go through and get rid of a lot of the zeros because it had been review bombed yeah. Uh, why is it getting review bombed? I guess we're going to find out in this video, but from what I understand, uh, people are upset that they made it not turn-based. <laughs> I think, uh, well, the, one of the people reasons people are upset is because it's a PS5 exclusive, which I think is a completely legitimate complaint. But, like, it's... It's like, okay, well, if I can't have it, no one should be able to have it. <laughs> That's probably the most insane reason for a review bombing I've ever heard. Like, well, n since we can't play it and we really want to play it, but we don't have PS5 so we can't play it, we should review bomb it so that no one else will want to play it. <laughs> That's the most toxic relationship you can have with a franchise that you claim to love that I can imagine. You said, I think there's actual nuanced discussion beyond saying people are greedy and trying to gatekeep and beyond review bombing the game. Indeed, there is nuanced criticism and praise to be given to this game. And that's what you're supposed to put in a review of the game. Not zero because you're mad for some petty reason. The, that is the place where that discussion should be taking. Hey there, everybody. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> sorry. I, I for, Shit. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to put it back on normal. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Jesse. Okay, let's start over. Oh. Hey there, everybody. It's Jesse. And today, I want to do something a, a little bit different because I noticed that in the run-up to <laughs> and bad. release of Final Fantasy 16, <laughs> there was a small but growing nice group of people online who began to say that they had problems with this newest release in the famous RPG franchise. This time, produced by Creative Business Unit 3, the team behind the extremely popular Final Fantasy 14 MMORPG. And I at the time, I felt for like I free. understood. 16 is a different direction for Final Up to level 60 without any limits on playtime. Final just Fantasy and one that some people will either like or not like, and that's totally fine. No, it's but not fine. But over the months leading to release and with it's the drop of the demo, actually. and now at launch, that not for me has kind of morphed into a not my Final Fantasy. A sort of catch-all phrase that I think harkens back to what is really a non-existent era where we all knew what Final Fantasy was in 16? Well, it ain't it. Which is nonsense. There's never been a this is what Final Fantasy is. Every single Final Fantasy game has pushed the boundaries of what the franchise was before. And every single one is different. Even if those differences are only in storytelling or world building. So when, for example, I watch Skill Up's review of the game, which by the way, a good review, dude makes great content. It bugged the hell out of me that the video opened with in Square Enix's haste to evolve this franchise into something new, they've left behind far too much that made Final Fantasy 
Final Fantasy. In what? trying to reach a new audience, they've left behind the audience that got the franchise to this point. And while most reviews and most players are extremely happy with the game, that's the thing I noticed in most of the negative talk about it, that there's this undercurrent of they've chosen to leave what made Final Fantasy Final Fantasy. They're leaving old fans behind for the new. And look, getting new fans was 100% the goal of Creative Business Unit 3. Yoshida, the producer of this N14, said it. I feel like every person that uh, experiences a franchise or perceives art is going to have something that sticks out to them but, like, and represents what that experience was. And for everyone, it's going to be different. <clears throat> For some people, they ask themselves, like you can ask yourself right now, what makes Final Fantasy Final Fantasy? And for you, it might be fantastic story, immersive story with uh, like the themes about friendship, <clears throat> the themes about killing God, <laughs> like Moogles, Chocobos, like all these little uh, creatures that make you feel like you're in these worlds that are all sort of reflections of each other and one person's one person might see that in every game in the franchise might see glimmers of that what it meant to them in every game and i definitely saw that in ff16 so far with like these scenes where you're looking out on the balcony and like you're talking to Jill as a child about war and like the inevitability of it and how we wish that we could just have simpler times and you know relax and be be kids or you know not have to worry about all these horrible things like to me that's so much what Final Fantasy is but that's to me different people might see it in different ways and I guess the people that are have tied it so closely to turn-based combat. To me, I per I really see that as such a narrow view of the game. I think that you're leaving out so much that makes the Final Fantasy vibe what it is. <clears throat> but that just might be all you take away from it, which to me is bizarre. That they could all they could do is just like change the combat and make it darker and instead of this feeling like a different flavor to you this feels like a different food that's strange like this does this mean that the the franchise can simply never evolve no it will it can it, and it is evolving and i think most people are feeling very good about it but i think it's also inevitable that certain people are just going to be p turned off because they want they hate change <laughs> there's always going to be people that will be upset about any kind of change that you make as much and I think due to the franchise's history and impact, many players have created their own idea of what Final Fantasy yeah. is to them, turning yeah. a blind eye to what the series is as a whole. It reminds me of when I was asked to be on a special board for PAX with various other people in the gaming space. And the question they asked us to, to help them solve was, how can we grow <clears> PAX? <throat> because at the moment, our core audience and attendees are getting older, having kids, have less time to come to the show. So how do we grow? And so myself and all the others in the room sat around thinking up all sorts of ways they could do this, offering advice. But the pushback we kept getting was, if we take your advice, we could risk alienating those who already attend. And so the conversation would devolve into what is the point of having us here if you're afraid to take the big risks? The only way you grow is yeah. by doing this. On this very channel, one which I have had probably far too long, I spent 10 years doing Let's Plays. And then the ecosystem changed and Twitch is where you went to go watch Let's Plays. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, what, what is this thumbnail? <laughs> Sorry, uh, what's this playlist called Cox Tease? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, it was a little bit distracting. <laughs> oh, that's like a song. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Is FF14 a betrayal of the franchise? Does FF14 not feel like Final Fantasy because it's not turn based? I mean, I guess you could say that it is turn based because of the shitty net code. I mean, it's pretty much like you're doing, you do something and then the boss does something and you do something. Maybe. Maybe that's why FF14 has gotten a pass. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 1.0 was. Okay.
plays and YouTube Let's Plays kind of died off unless you had some sort of gimmick or some sort of fun goof thing that you were doing. For the most part, most people didn't want to watch complete Let's Plays on YouTube, especially from someone who in gaming space or influencer or content creator terms is an old man. And so I stopped for the most part and instead did more news related things and I'm sorry. This was 13 years ago, Cataclysm? When they, when, when, no. Twenty ten. Oh my god! What? I did the Kajakola quest thirteen years ago. Hmm. <laughs> No, 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 no. Why would you remind me of that? I'm trying to... Uh, that's why this is about old fans. The videos, the Final Fantasy 16 leave old fans behind. Well, this is relevant to me because I'm an old ass fan. Videos like this. And yeah, sure, I took a hit at the start. People who had been here for a while were like, this isn't the Jesse I know, not my Jesse. But the <laughs> channel recovered, it's growing again. I'm and sorry. I'm sorry to pause so much, but I'm such a good cosplayer. I've never seen it. <laughs> For a while, we're like, this isn't the Jesse I know, not my wow. Jesse. But wow. the channel recovered, it's growing okay. again, and I've never been happier. And that is what's happening to Final Fantasy. In order to keep the franchise around another 30 years, they have to grow oh. and change grow and become and something that more reflects what today's gamers want. And going yes. back to Skill Up's review, just look at the comments. People in the comments are saying, never played a Final Fantasy, but I'm gonna try this one out. And that is a huge victory for Yoshida and Square Enix and everyone involved, no matter what the lineage of Final Fantasy is. Yes. And we should talk that lineage because Final Fantasy is a series <laughs> that has always been about taking risks. The name Final Fantasy comes partially yes, from the is. fact that it was Sakaguchi's last attempt, his final risk at creating something before giving up on game dev altogether. But the game was a hit, mm. and each iteration since has taken the same risks. The rest is history, a history worth talking about because I'm still asking the question, when was Final Fantasy Final Fantasy? And more importantly, how do you even define what that means? So I think one of the biggest risks that they've ever taken was attempting to salvage or save Final Fantasy XIV. Like, when you think about just how turbo fuck the game was in 1.0, the fact that anyone, anyone in their right mind would volunteer to salvage this absolute shit pile into something playable, much less something that would be like, <laughs> that would make a mark on the franchise. Like, that seems like a pretty enormous and gigantic risk that they took because the safer option would have just been to throw the whole thing in the garbage. They didn't do that. Clearly, we're going to include music. The music has always That's been it. amazing in Final Fantasy. That's Final the visuals, Fantasy. even back in the sprite and mode seven days, were stunning. Then maybe when you say it's not Final Fantasy, you mean the combat system, how it's not turn-based or, or it looks different. You miss the active time battles, which really haven't been a thing since 2001 in Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy XI <laughs> and XIV are MMORPGs and have MMORPG-style combat. Twelve did away with random encounters and made enemies visible on the map. The active time battle system became the active dimension battle system and introduced gambits. Mm -hmm. Thirteen returned to a variant of the ATB system, although with much more button mashing. Fifteen introduced an action-based system called the active cross battle, which instead of a menu, players mapped buttons on a controller. They're all over the place. And the active time battle system of old wasn't really introduced until Final Fantasy 4 and 5, and then 5 had the job system, which was a whole other thing, and then that wasn't in Final Fantasy 6. So I guess then maybe when you're saying it's not your Final Fantasy, you're talking about the setting. Or, or well, I think that if it's good, then it's Final Fantasy. Like, if I liked it and it was good, then it's, it's real Final Fantasy. If I didn't like it and it sucked, then it's not my final fantasy. <laughs>
<laughs> like if it's boring and, and shitty, that's not true Final Fantasy. That's really, I think, I, th I think that's what, that's the only way that we'll know for sure. I feel like there's also people that will just, they're never going to be fucking satisfied. Because I played the Phoenix versus Ifrit battle, which is, you know, this incredibly epic icon battle, or I've done like some, I've done a lot of other uh, boss battles in the game so far from the demo and up to the point that we're at. Well, we're not very far into the full game yet. But so far, everything that I've experienced with the battles has been probably the most epic feeling combat I've ever experienced in any game. The combat feels really good. Now, watching it, watching people play it, I couldn't really get a sense for that. You just can't. You have to have the controller in your hand and you have to experience it for yourself to like feel the actual impact of hits. But uh, I just, I cannot fathom how someone could do, just for example, the Ifrit versus Phoenix battle, put down the controller after that incredible experience and think, eh, like, that was just not very, that wasn't good enough for me. I, what else, what the fuck else do you want? What else do you, what else do you want? I feel like just some people will never be happy. And if you gave the same person the turn-based game and they played that, they'd be like, oh, well, maybe they should have tried a new action game, action combat instead. I, I really do feel like there's a, there's a section of people, and this, of course, this is broad strokes, some people are simply not going to like the action combat, but just in terms of the vast number of <laughs> negative people, like people that have just parroted that negative line, like the review bombing shit that's gone on with it, these people aren't really thinking about it. They're just excited to have something to complain about and excited to repeat something negative because that's it's like a, uh, a habit for them. For the world building. But even there, the games have always pushed the boundaries. Final Fantasy 1 through 5 were fantasy stories set in worlds of castles and crystals, and sure, there were airships and chocobos and moogles, but all of that took time to develop too. There were no chocobos in Final Fantasy 1. The first moogle was in Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 4 was the first time they really started to delve into deep character drama. Final yeah, Fantasy 6 but... was this push into the trope of magic versus technology. Seven then took that concept and ran with it, as technology and its impact on the world played a major role in that storytelling. Hell, you spent the first part of that game in a giant city dystopian cyberpunk setting, which was shocking at the time. <laughs> Eight is about teens and floating schools battling other school kids and then witches? Nine is a return oh, to fantasy alert. as a tribute to the games Jesse. that came before it, and then spoiler. ten brings us the world of Blitzball, big cities, and a world that for the first time is kind of modeled off something different compared to the other games, this time being inspired by Southeast Asia. 11 is straight up an old school MMORPG with fantasy tropes abound. 12 is a return to magic versus technology in a vast desert filled world, echoing more Star Wars than Final Fantasy. 13, 1, 2, and 3 are actually, straight up anime as hell true. and set in a semi-futuristic world. And 15, is literally four dudes pushing a car to the song Stand By Me. And I saved 14 for last since it's ongoing. And honestly, since Yoshida save produces this game as well, it makes sense to save this for the end of the list. If you don't know the history of this game, just go watch the Noclip documentary. It's amazing. But it also clearly establishes that 14 is a love letter to every single one of these other games I mentioned. Yoshida and the team love Final Fantasy. There is absolutely no way they would set <laughs> out to ruin here? that. The changes they've made to 16 aren't drastic. I would say too that Yoshida said at the FF16 like big uh, launch event, I remember him saying that the difference between the Final Fantasies, uh, no, what sets each Final Fantasy apart in the franchise is their differences, really. And he, he talked about this because, I mean, I'm sure that he had already foreseen that by taking such a big risk with this game and trying to uh, branch it out a little bit more and update it and modernize it a little bit more, he, like, he, he probably knew that some people were just going to be rubbed the wrong way about that. And uh, he said, yeah, there's a spirit of Final Fantasy that we want to preserve, but there's also uh, 
each game has differences that set it apart from all the others. I just, I personally, look, I do not fucking understand how you can play a game like Final Fantasy 16 with Ramu, Ifrit, Shiva, Bahamut, Phoenix in it. There's Moogles in it. There's Chocobos in it. You are uh, <laughs> basically fighting against, like, you've got to deal with the, the legacy of the Mother Crystals and put an end to the legacy of the Mother Do all of that. And say, this isn't Final Fantasy. Like, bro, do you know what the fuck Final Fantasy is? <laughs> what are you talking about? Or crazy attempts to lure a new audience. They're yeah, Ifrit, Shiva, Bahamut, Titan. What game is this? I can't, I don't know. I don't know what game it could be. Keeping with tradition. And yeah, you may still have the complaint that it's is more it Game Final of Fantasy? Thrones than sure. Final Fantasy. And uh, first, I feel like a lot of people are still upset about Game of Thrones. Uh, look, it hurt me too. That ending sucked. But it's still like a loaded phrase. It's it's akin to calling something the Dark Souls of. There's this connotation that they're not trying to do anything new. They're just trying to copy something else and lure people in. But I still feel like that complaint is off the mark. Like, I don't understand what you mean by that. I, I don't think you mean fantasy settings. There have been fantasy settings in Final Fantasy games forever. Is that it it's trying to be more adult? More mature? Uh, oh! maybe that's it wait shit maybe that's it maybe it's because this one is very sexy maybe it's because this one has sex in it and maybe it's pissing off people that don't want to be reminded about sex <laughs> maybe it's just maybe it's hitting a nerve for certain people yeah, they're like, I don't want to. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to worry about it. Have sexual situations, violence, swear. I can't handle the sexual situations. I play Final Fantasy to forget about the possibility of sexual situations. I do not wish to be reminded of that in my Final Fantasy. Maybe that's it. Bring in that fantasy setting. I mean, <laughs> you probably didn't play or like Final Fantasy Tactics then, because that game is. Game of Thrones is shit, and it's not even a mainline game. Adult themes have been part of Final Fantasy for decades. The only difference is, culturally, we're in a place where the average video game player is 30-something. And the developers, and more importantly, the translators well, who are responsible for making that. a lot of the previous Final Fantasy games more kid-friendly, they're like, oh! Are you, are, you sh are you really? You're gonna put Lakshmi saying, you're gonna put Lakshmi's bosom here in your video and we're talking about it. The, the, you know, you remember that time in Final Fantasy XIV when Lakshmi, she put her booba in everyone's face and everyone is, tra is, is hypnotized by her booba and she says, she says, rest your souls in, in my bosom. Remember, remember that? A lot of the previous Final Fantasy games more kid friendly, they're like, oh, we don't have to hide our adult story under the veneer of teen or kid friendly anymore just some examples off the top of my head final fantasy 6 had genocide suicide slavery and much worse but that's spoilers 7 literally had a scene where a man tries to rape one or more of the main characters hell there's straight up a story beat about forcing two characters into interspecies sex one of the main themes of 9 is a child coming Wait, to terms what? with life death and what any of it's for hell 10 is about the corruption of religion there are so many examples I couldn't possibly remember all of them or spell them out for you, but I'm sure people in the comments will. And that's what rubs me wrong about all of this. None of it's new. Even the complaints. You don't even have to go far back to see examples of that. When Final Fantasy XII came out, fans thought it was a little too mature and serious compared to X and X2, which had some mature themes but were presented differently. When 7 came out, sure, it was praised by many people, but at the same time, reviewers would say stuff like, the storytelling is lengthy, involved, and definitely too dialogue heavy for preteen attention spans. There's also swear words in adult situations. Swear or, words? But while most Japanese RPGs are happy to adopt an if it's not broke, don't fix it attitude in bringing their titles across from the 16 bit days, Final Fantasy VII has decided to divorce itself almost entirely from its predecessors and tip the whole genre on its head. That's not Look, my Final it's Fantasy. It's more than okay to not like a game for any number of reasons no if you don't like 16 that's fine but no it's not okay 
it's not okay to not like FF16, and it's not okay to not like FF14. <laughs> Have you got a problem with it? Okay, you can go tell Jesse about it, but around here, we are going to be... You're only allowed to have a based opinion about FF16. It's the internet. You think it's okay for me to let other people dislike things that I like? I don't fucking think so. Okay, all right, all right, look. I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, I'll throw you a bone here. You're allowed to dislike things about FF16 that I also dislike. And you're allowed to dislike things about FF14 that I too do not enjoy about that game. So that's okay, but just run it by me first and I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. To say it's not Final Fantasy or leaving fans behind <laughs> is an insult to the legacy of what these games are. They're all unique. They're all different Horrible. and willing to try unique and different things. That's what makes them special. So while you may not like the changes they made to this one, like how I didn't like 13, it's still exactly what it has always been. Taking chances, pushing boundaries, and trying to reach a new audience. That's what makes it such a fun franchise. Yeah. You can be a fan of eight or 12 or four or six or 16 or yes. maybe just seven. But I promise you, for the vast, vast majority of fans, even you watching right now, Me? you most likely became a fan because of a risk or change that might have upset another player. But it got you hooked. There is no my Final Fantasy. There's just Final Fantasy. Good, bad, and everything in between. That was such a good point that he made at the end. Wow. He said, the reason that you like, you got into Final Fantasy is probably because of some risk or change that happened to the franchise that pissed off some other player. What a great point. Because for me, Final Fantasy XIV is what got me into the franchise. I'd never, I'd never played a Final Fantasy before Final Fantasy XIV. And I had a lot of preconceptions about it even then. In 2015, when I went to Final Fantasy XIV, I thought, I was asking the question, do I need to play every, do I need to play Final Fantasy I through Final Fantasy XV before I can play, I mean, Final Fantasy XIII, sorry, I forgot how to count, before I can play Final Fantasy XIV? I didn't know. And it's high time that they try to, you know, throw wide the gates to bring in more types of players. And I would have never tried FF14. I would have never gotten interested in Final Fantasy franchise at all if it hadn't been an MMO, if it hadn't been something new, if it hadn't been something new and fresh, which is what that game is and was. And the same thing is true for Final Fantasy 16. And I feel like uh, it's only good for the franchise to have more t different types of games in it. But of course, you know, with every main game in the franchise, because it's going to bring in more people, before I get off to the next point, it's going to bring in more people, and these other people will come to Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> okay. So, overall... It's good because when people are done with Final Fantasy 16, they will play Final Fantasy 14, which is what we're trying. That's the that's the end goal. We got to bring more people into our FF14 cult. One of Be Jesse's best videos, and he made it over the weekend because he was irritated by Twitter trolls. I really do think that. Uh, there is just people who, wait, there's people who love, 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 love complaining, especially if they can complain and find problems with something that is very popular and that everyone likes. There's people that really get off on uh, raining on other people's parade. It's a, 
it's a state of mind. It is a lifestyle. It is their bread and butter, their pride and joy. They fucking love it. Okay. And I do not believe for one fucking second that any any of these people did a fraction of the research that Jesse did in this historical review, this historical and comparative review of every Final Fantasy and seeing what makes them different and, and what makes them the same. Like, nobody's fucking doing that. I do think that with Final Fantasy as a franchise, each game is so hyped up. And so people look forward to it for years and years and years. And we all know the issue with overhype, right? People are already looking forward to and speculating about Final Fantasy 17. And even though Final Fantasy 16, everything that I have seen and played up, up to this point, shows me that it is a masterpiece made with so much love for the franchise and yet also standing on its own two feet being something new while honoring the past. I do believe Final Fantasy 16 does that extremely fucking well. But, uh, the fact is, hold on, the music. There, anyway, the, the music changed and it, it distracted me for a second. <laughs> what I want to say is, overhype, no matter how good the game is, it may, like it will cause the game to never ever be able to live up to the expectations that you had set out for it. And if you have spent literally five to ten years looking for the, and thinking about the next Final Fantasy and thinking about all the ways that it was going to be exactly the way that you had already imagined it, no game, no Final Fantasy game that they could ever make will live up to that idea that you have in your head. No one can do that. Only because it's in your head. And this is something that will, I think will always be an issue for the franchise. Just because, it's kind of like a, I feel like Elder Scrolls has this issue to a degree. Like the Elder Scrolls 6 is an example where there is so much hype around it that there's no way that it could live up to people's expectations. Half-Life. Maybe that's why they gave up on Half-Life. It'll never live up to what people are imagining. Because at this point, as more time goes on, different people imagine different things. And that's what this whole video is about. Different people think Final Fantasy means different things. And it's hard for everyone to come to a agreement on what it is. When it's this ephemeral feeling. It's just... It's, it's not just a Moogle, it's not just a Chocobo, it's not just the story of friendship, it's all of these things combined in some new way. Some people will always be reaching for the past with their experience and their hope for a game in that franchise. People do this with World of Warcraft, they do it with even Final Fantasy XIV, they do it with really every game that is in a long-standing franchise. The longer it goes on, the more people you have that remember the old days that remember it how it was and they I think a lot of times entangle their uh, their memories their fond memories of the times that they had playing that game in the past with the game itself so they remember like for example Wrath of the Lich King the good times raiding with my guild back then and that was a different time it was a different place my life was different my circumstances were different and a lot of times people cannot clearly see how this, the time and the circumstances and the game being how it was in that time were all part of this cohesive experience. And you can't separate one part from the other. And there's no way you can ever take that part out of the past and recreate it in the present. To move forward, it always has to be, it has to grow, it has to change, it has to be new, it has to be fresh. And you need to be open-minded to that. I think it's a lot of times people that are held on for dear life to the past and don't want to look ahead. They want things to be how they were. They want things to make them feel the way they did, but it's never going to be like that. The past is gone. And uh, the best thing that can happen is you have a game that isn't so uh, heavily focused on fan service and so heavily focused on um, 
like nostalgia juicing that that's all it becomes about that's very irritating but that never uh really had that's usually not the case in ff14 and it's not the case in ff16 either um you can honor the past without becoming obsessed with it you can honor the past in the spirit of what the franchise is and has been while still reaching towards something new and i think that's something ff16 does really well <laughs> 